Tsunamis infamously ignore international boundaries. And, and so it is that tsunami science needs to ignore international boundaries. This is not the only one of its kind. Don't be surprised if another one happens. Tsunamis are caused by major earthquakes out to sea. These happen in places where tectonic plates crash together. Tsunamis tend to occur at subduction zones, and we can see subduction zones rimming the Pacific Ocean. We have the Cascadia subduction zone here, the Middle America Trench down here, and of course the Peru-Chile Trench down here, which generated the largest subduction zone earthquake ever recorded in 1960. You have a tectonic plate, one of the parts of Earth's outer shell that moves relative to another part. One tectonic plate diving at a gentle angle under another. But the plates stuck together where the overriding plate has its leading edge. So that the overriding plate stuck gets bulged up in between times. And then during the earthquake, kicks the seafloor. And that helps to drive a tsunami. It's, it warps the seafloor. When such huge waves hit beaches, they scoop up vast amounts of sand, which is left behind in layers stretching far inland. The 2004 tsunami was generated offshore Sumatra and also the Andaman and Nicobar Islands north of Sumatra. It was known that an earthquake this big, measuring 9.2 on the Richter scale and releasing a huge amount of pent-up energy, had not happened in the Indian Ocean for at least 200 years. Now, nature publishes the work of geologists who've uncovered massive tsunamis which hit the same region about 700 and 1400 years ago. The uh, wave hit Sumatra first, along with the Andaman Nicobar Islands. The next place it was hit was Sri Lanka, followed by the Maldives, and then East Africa, Kenya, and even uh, Madagascar. Brian McAdoo and his colleagues surveyed the devastated areas of Sumatra very soon after the tsunami hit. We're about two or three kilometers in from the beach here and still dealing with at least 90% of every structure destroyed. Probably about a solid meter high above ground wave, which may be two or three meters above sea level, even a kilometer or so inland. So he ran away because when the first wave came in, and people saw that run, 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 run away, run away, something like that. Imagine a wall of water coming at you that's about 10 meters high. Turns out it's about 10 meters per second that the wave comes in. Usain Bolt just won the 100 meter dash in the Olympics in just over nine seconds. If you were Usain Bolt, you could maybe outrun this wave, but then imagine the wave comes in for one kilometer. Brian Atwater and Maria Martin joined a geological team in Thailand, a country also badly hit in 2004. What they found there makes them particularly concerned for the safety of people in their own very vulnerable part of the Pacific Northwest of America. Today, accompanied by David Hollett from the Island County Department of Emergency Management, they demonstrated for nature just how tsunami geologists work. They hope to confirm work already done by scientists from Texas and British Columbia. According to the work that was done here by Harry Williams and Ian Hutchison, throughout this area and down the road a bit, they mapped a, a pair of sand layers. The first place they dug quickly revealed the proof. That feels sandy, huh? Okay, the best guess is this from the year AD 400, and this is close to the year AD 700. Not as spectacular as the tie layers, but still something real, huh? So what evidence did the geologists find in Thailand? So our Thai colleagues began soon after the 2004 tsunami with a survey to map out the areas that had been covered by the tsunami. It must have been a, a horrible job for them because they're going into an area of such disaster and so much loss of life. I think all of them were geologists dealing with tsunami for the first time. 
On this paper, the lead author is Kuron Jankow from Thailand, her colleagues Montre and Tuk, Brian and myself from the U.S., Yuki Sawai from Japan, and Amy Pendergrass from Australia. We'd go out to these beach ridge swales, these low, wetter areas, and we'd dig holes and see what we found and wouldn't find anything, and so we'd move to the next area and dig holes again and try again. And finally, we went to a place with a large, wet swale, and when we dug there, we found the 2004 deposit well-preserved and a layer below it. And as we worked towards the wettest part of this swale, we found more and more layers, and we ended up finding at least three other layers besides 2004 in this area. Here, on the island of Praton, the top level is sand deposited in 2004. Carbon dating reveals layers in this marsh going back 2,800 years, and the most recent in historical times dates from about 700 years ago. How do we know? that the sand came from the sea, okay, at Pratong Island. Uh, how do we know it's not a river flood? Well, the island is a beach ridge plain. There are no rivers. There's no way that a river from the upland can even get there. And so just by context, the only place that the sand could have come from is the sea. The sand layer we found in these deposits in Aceh started off very coarse close to the ocean and got finer as you go inland. So as the wave comes in, as this very turbulent wave bore coming in, as it slows down, it drops out the heaviest grains first, and it's only left with the fine grains that continue to move inland. Working with Brian in Aceh, Sumatra, Katrin Monica led an international team which not only found sand layers matching those in Thailand, but also found evidence of a slightly smaller tsunami which hit the country in 1907. But in one place, most people actually survived the wave in 2004. Why? Do they have the story about the uh, 1907? Yeah. There's a small island off the coast of Sumatra called Simelu Island, and the people there were strongly affected by an earthquake that occurred in 1907. And this event wiped out a significant part of their population and was recorded by stories in the memory of these people. The stories of that 1907 tsunami have been passed down through several generations. So when the earthquake occurred in 2004, they knew how to react and they actually went to preordained meeting places that were in high ground before the tsunami arrived. And only eight people out of a population of almost 90,000 died during the 2004 tsunami. So education is key. The Thailand team found a way to communicate their findings in a telling way. We scrounged up a piece of corrugated steel roofing from a building that had been destroyed by the tsunami and pressed it against the wall of the pit and cut the thing out and plopped it on the ground, and cleaned it up, loaded onto the tractor for the two kilometer bumpy ride back to this village meeting and then laid it out on the table and showed people, okay, here's your record of 2004, you all know about this, because most of them had probably lost family members to it. And then over here, just down below it, was sign of an earlier one. 2004 was really a watershed event. Because it was so unprecedented in its scale, I mean, almost a quarter of a million people died during that event, it really was a wake-up call for where this could occur in other places. Probably the biggest earthquake that can occur would occur offshore Oregon and Washington in the Cascadia subduction zone. That would probably be on the order of a magnitude 9 to 9.5 earthquake. Yeah, we were guessing maybe 150 kilometers from the tsunami source for a Cascadia tsunami. If it's generated directly off the Strait of Juan de Fuca, maybe 150 kilometers from there to here. Because it's 80 miles off the coast. Every, everybody along here has had a, had a tsunami brief. Really? From this interval, you, you wouldn't be surprised to see another big Cascadia earthquake happen tomorrow. Anything that we, as emergency managers, can gain from uh, uh, these studies to pass on to the folks that live along the, along the beaches here in the Pacific Northwest is something that's concrete and tangible. If they follow my signs, they're going to get to higher ground. <laughs> <laughs>